what is Josh even doing? But also, how in the world is it so effective? Plus, Bananas leaves red, then finally helps them get a win. No one wants to talk to anyone, so Josh fills the silence. The secret garden may be in shambles already. Dusty has moved beyond a stand to a new level of fandom never before known. Wes is left in the dark, and Desi is feeling down on herself, but gets the ultimate pick-me-up of a pole wrestle-style elimination. It's the challenge. USA 2 Episode 4 recap coming up right now. What up, my fellow challenge lovers? Welcome to The Challenge Historian, where we dive deep into all things MTV's The Challenge, past, present, or future, if it's happening in The Challenge Universe, and we are here to document it. I am your host and dedicated challenge historian, Jacob Hollaball. Thank you so very, very much for being here with me today. We're back in Chicago, recording from our regular office, even though we recorded all different types of places, went home here in the home base of Chicago, but we made it back. The travels have ended, and... Un- unexpectedly, we made it back quicker than anticipated. So here you go. The episode's coming to you live immediately after the show has aired, which is how it's meant to be and how it will hopefully now be pretty much every episode, the rest of Challenge USA 2, with one small exception, a couple Thursdays down the line. But here we are tonight to talk Challenge USA 2, episode four, another fantastic episode. We'll get to it later, but so far this season... For what a challenge season and a challenge USA season can be has been very, very good in this episode was definitely a very entertaining one. So there is a lot to discuss. The program reminders are simply challenge USA to twice a week until it drops to once a week. And then we will maybe fill that gap and try to keep the pods coming twice a week if possible at that point. But we've got a couple more weeks of challenge USA fill in twice a week. Monday mornings and Friday mornings. First thing that should be there in your podcast feeds. Same agenda as we have done the first three episodes, storylines, awards, power rankings, predictions. You know the drill by now, as always at Challenge Historian on Instagram. If you want to get in touch, talk about this season or anything else challenge related, hit me up or possibly I have gotten some good feedback. Some, uh, a lot of people chiming in that maybe some survivor coverage, not just over on different podcast feeds, but here on this very feed would be good. I've been, you know, we're watching the challenge on you uh, on USA. She's on CBS. Nowadays, we're seeing those survivor promos. We're about a month out from that season starting. So that very well could be coming in the future. Stay tuned for that. Thank you as always for being here. Let's dive in. A lot to get to Challenge USA 2, episode four. Here we go. All righty, with our storylines this episode, we're going to do a classic walk through the episode. There is a couple definite standout storylines and standout moments that we've got to talk a little bit more about than others, but pretty much every segment of the show had something worth talking about. And when that is the case, it's easiest to just kind of go chronological, go moment by moment, section by section. So let's start where the episode starts. Bananas has to pick a team and I got it partially right last week. I said he would pick blue. I was confident in that, but I thought he would replace Sebastian, not Corey. He does pick blue, but he replaces Corey. And the question I immediately had, and I did have a couple commenters on YouTube from one of the past episodes where, or episode one, where I discussed, you know, with the draft, um, it seemed like they were obviously, you know, not only supposed to have two vets per team, but it had to be a male and a female per team. It felt like in this moment, it also, there is some rules we're not being told about there only being allowed one, you know, of the three Corey West bananas or Tori, Amanda, and previously before eliminated John A on a given team. And it feels like he was told like he wasn't bananas, wasn't allowed to replace Sebastian and have him Corey and Tori all three on a team, because that would maybe be too big of a voting block. I don't know it. I assume that's the rule. And I assume that's why he had to do that and why Corey didn't get like super pissed about it and be like, what the fuck? Dude? Like we, I know we said I wasn't going to work with you, but like, I don't know. You still would maybe want to be on your team. I think we would have seen some of that. If this wasn't a rule, I think I feel very confident that that is a rule that is happening. And if it is like, 
just tell us. Why not just tell us? We're very used to a very complicated game at this point. Just fill us in. I don't know. Seemed a little odd. Anyways, he picks blue. I think it's the right choice as far as the team. And again, is if that is the rule, then that's the right choice as for who he had to replace because he literally had to replace them. And it also would eliminate any idea of him going to green where he would be having to replace Wes, which is obviously the only reason he would go to green in the first place. So makes sense. Banana switches teams to blue. Good choice. Then we've got Josh going off part one because... There's multiple parts to this story, this episode, but the first one, the one they teased earlier in the day, they had put the clip out about it, and then we get to see the full thing in action. Everyone, basically the whole house is sitting around in the living room. No one's really talking, and Josh just decides, I guess I'm going to talk, and I'm going to talk a lot, and I'm going to talk some shit, and it's just going to be a, a whole thing. And I would love to know if something set off this monologue or not. I would love to find out if there was like any sort of commentary or any, even probably from Josh of like, Hey, you know, who are you working with? They're like, why we haven't talked game. What's with that? What, what are you going? Oh, why are you guys leaving the room together? What are you doing going and closing the door behind you? Like there had to be some initial comment even from him or maybe from someone else or some little conversation that happened that sparked this monologue. I would love to know what exactly that was, but this was the part of the episode while it was entertaining, I was still found myself yet again being kind of like, yeah, I'm just not a Josh fan. I'm just not. I'm kind of in the camp of like, I'm I'm not here for this. Uh, it's kind of always just a bunch of bluster and whatever. Uh, that's how I felt in this moment. But part of me was at least enjoying and appreciating that the meat of what he was saying, the meat of what he was trying to get to with that little monologue and yelling uh, was that like this has become all survivor big brother like big brotherified survivorified you know of like everyone just whispers in behind it closed doors no one actually hangs out no one talks no one has like totally has fun or whatever because it's just like whispers 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 strategy 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 this plan over here plan b over here plan c over here whatever and so i do agree with him that like yeah that's what this show has become that's what they seemingly want the challenge USA at a minimum, if not all challenge franchises to become is just this big brother or survivor style. It's just about the game. It's just about the political maneuvering, the strategy talks, this, that, and the other, nothing to do with, you know, just the people hanging out or like the reality show of it. It really, really, really is just about the gameplay and the twists and the turns and the competition. And that's it. So I did appreciate that. He was just kind of like, do any of you like, like, I, I I love that he didn't say it, but he, he could have been like, you know, I'm from big brother, but like I came to the challenge and did some challenge type of stuff. Like I'm doing some challenge type of stuff right now by causing a stir for no reason other than just like, I don't know. It's more fun when people are yelling at each other in the house than it is just a bunch of people whispering for 60 minutes at a time, you know? So I wasn't in love with it, but I was at least like, Hey, I kind of appreciate some of what you are saying. Then we went to the daily challenge next And this daily challenge was awesome. It had it all extreme sport, like kind of extreme sports, you know, like on the semi thing is always, always fun when they come up with a cool idea on the side of a semi, you got to have semis and a couple of the dailies every season. It just, that's their rules. It seems, and I'm, I'm okay with it. Most of them end up being good. This one was freaking awesome. Uh, you had to be athletic. You had to be a little strong. You had to be willing to be physical. There was a lot of mental strategy going on. There was one-on-one matchups that were clearly picked for a reason and were fun to get to watch. It seemed like it would be an absolute blast to do one of those. Like, this is why we do the challenge. Corey even yells at one point in this. I love the challenge. It's awesome all the way through everything about it. And they have done a really great job with the dailies so far this season. We are four for four. They've been really, really good. And I've really liked them and they're the production team kicking ass in that department. Certainly. Wes starts the whole thing off by getting eight for eight. I believe I'm not a hundred percent, but I believe by the end, he is the only person who has gone eight for eight on his points. The problem is that he is partnered up at the time with Amanda who gets one, which I think is the worst anyone does until the final round when Tori and bananas sabotage Monty and Michaela. So it's a tough one for Wes. 
Um, it's kind of been a tough, tough sledding for Wes here to find footing in the game. He's still doing good on his own, but on his own, isn't going to be enough in this particular game. And we won't really talk much more about him in this pod from this episode, but I think he's uh, going to be taking center stage before long here, still dominating in the background as he tends to do blue then. And lastly, Amanda getting one in the end, it is, she probably does have herself to blame for ending up in elimination. Like. They lose by seven in the end. Um, not that she needed to get eight and like, but if if the score is tighter, maybe things are a little different in that final round. I don't know. Maybe it still ends up being the same, but it definitely doesn't. It's a little deflating for her team, nonetheless. That you know, it starts off and West goes perfect and she goes one for eight. So tough, tough look for her there. Blue then throws it. Tori and bananas, I will say, uh, are the type of pair that like they could in theory they could have got all 16 and in theory if they did i forget the exact scores going into it but like even if they were to get all 16 they would have also had to block a good amount of green to like catch up and surpass so it really is smart on the whole team's part to just look we basically don't have a chance to win in this round so we should ensure our safety by any means necessary which includes just the means that are available to them are pick a team and support them and block the other. And they're going up against green. So they kind of only have the option of, are we going to screw green over or are we just going to like, let them score all of them and, and like kind of make it clear, like help them or whatever. You know, we're either going to try to dominate or defend them or we're going to help them, but we have to go up against them. So it's kind of that decision. They obviously decide to stop them. It sucks for green. But this is smart sabotage, smart tanking. It's the kind I'm okay with because, you know, it's right down the last round. It's not like they went into the whole thing with this deal and they made the Olymp- the whole daily challenge kind of pointless or anything like that. It's, you know, they got down. It was like, we can no longer win. Probably, almost certainly can't no longer win. And so why not make sure to, we're going to be safe because otherwise, especially with it being Tori and bananas up there. They're the ones like, uh, you know, we're been targeted, been in there once probably will end up in there again. So like, we need to really build bigger alliances and make this kind of two team alliance between the two sides. And bananas was the perfect one to do that. Having come from red team. So it just makes a lot of sense. And I'm totally down with it. Michaela, we did see that hair grab. We saw that. Okay. Um, Speaking of Michaela, real quick, we also found out from Amanda via Twitter after last week that uh, Wes and Michaela have definitely been yelling at each other, and we have definitely not been seeing it. Most notably, the one she called out last week, Amanda, that is called out, was that in that moment last week, right before the daily where they do the full team, little confessional pre-daily, and Michaela kind of like threw some shade at Wes, that after that moment, there was a bit of a blow up and that uh, we didn't get to see any of that. And there's definitely some icy tension between Wes and his whole team, but it mostly seems to be like Michaela and Wes are the Michaela is the one kind of embodying or the most willing to, I think eventually be the face of the resistance within his team uh, towards Wes. So we will see if that comes to fruition, but that's the daily challenge. And then all hell broke loose. We get to the house nominations are upon us after a little, you know, a couple meetings and whatnot. We, we find out from Josh during his little meeting with the other vets, AKA Tori and bananas and Wes and Amanda that, you know, he's willing to go to a stalemate. He's willing to put himself on the line for these other people. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me personally, but we will come back to that later. Then we, we go to the nominations though. And this is the part of the episode, part two of Josh's chaos, if you will, that I actually loved. I was really entertained by. I thought it was amazing and and very entertaining and just really fun and chaotic. And I had no idea what the hell he was doing or saying or what was going on in general, but it all worked. And my girl, Michelle, amongst others, took a big L in a big way. And that bummed me out. But I was like, I, I like this. Unlike the first part of the episode, his first blow up, I was like, I'm, I don't know. This is fun. <laughs> this, I don't know. I have no idea what you're doing, but I'm having a good time watching it. So it's pure chaos the whole time. He's just kind of like domineering. He's a little just like, I'm going to out energy you. I'm going to out yell you. I'm going to out drama you. 
towards everyone. It's just like, if I just keep yelling, if I stand up, if I shout you down, if I do all this stuff, the first couple times you'll get mad and, you know, say whatever you want to say about me, but eventually you'll just get annoyed and tired of it. And you'll let me win. And it works. It's lunacy and it completely works. His team can't take it. They can't just sit there and say, okay, whenever you're done, this is who we're voting for. And it's a stalemate. They can't, they can't fight, do it. They don't have the patience. They don't have the composure up against this just blubbering, yelling chaos, Josh. They're just like, if it will stop, we'll vote with you. If you'll just fucking stop and it works, it's amazing. So hats off to Josh for that because he gets Tiffany and Michelle to fold both of them completely and utterly fold under his pressure. Now, we referenced before, is this a good strategy for Josh? He does all of this to save Amanda and save Wes or attempt to save Amanda and Wes because in not just purely for Amanda and Wes, but also to show his loyalty to the entire vet contingent, most notably Tori and bananas uh, in that as well. And then I think Josh thinks, you know, within that is uh Fessel and Corey as well. And no, this is not a good strategy. This is absolutely horrible strategy from Josh. It's an amazing execution of a strategy that is a horrible strategy. That's what this all falls down to. And it's, again, that's why it's so good. It's amazing. It's wonderful. It's, I laughed. I was thrilled. I was entertained, but like, I can't believe he pulled it off. And I don't know why the hell he's doing it. It doesn't make sense. Why do you want to run a final versus bananas or Wes? It, I, yeah, it just it makes, it makes no sense to me. Um, it reminds me, you know, back on spies, lies and allies when Devin and Josh have that conversation early in the season of like, we kind of got to get CT out, right? Like, we're not going to win. Like, let's be honest. We're not going to win a final versus CT. We got to get them out. And then like, neither of them ever really actually tried to get CT out. And what do you know? CT won the final. And I feel like Josh is just setting himself up here for that's dope that you made the final dude. You got to a final. That is awesome. And then you had zero chance of beating West and zero chance of beating bananas in it. And maybe even zero chance of beating Fessy or Corey in it. And so like, why are you trying to get those five guys into a final? It makes no sense. The allegiance to Amanda, that makes perfect sense. They've been tied since, you know, day one, War of the Worlds won, where he technically lost the very first time, but then got to come back in because of the injury and him and Amanda are partners. And, you know, they've been friends ever since. Kind of chaotic friends, uh, you know, brother, sister, much to Josh on War of the Worlds one's chagrin. Nothing romantic was allowed, but, you know, kind of brother, sister, bickering, but love each other and they're tight the whole way. We'll say this, Chanel, um, his back Chanel's back and forth with Josh specifically about like, who do you want in the final? When Josh tries to throw, like, why would you want Desi? And she's like, why the hell would you want Amanda? You know, it's like both of you completely good points. That is what is so interesting about the male female dynamic of knowing kind of at this point, like the way the finals works is you get paired up. That's how USA one worked. That's how a lot of recent finals on different franchises have worked. And that's, it's, it's a lovely way to do the format because of this exact dynamic of that, those polar opposite opinions and both of them being right. Chanel held her own during all of this. Her Alliance members did not shout out to Chanel for having a backbone and having a little bit of patience to just listen to this blubbering guy next to her and then be like, okay, cool. But also, and yeah, Tiffany and Michelle didn't, they both take L's. And while we only, again, as always see a little bit of the conversation that happened afterwards and probably not anywhere near the length of the conversation that happened words afterwards between the garden Alliance, the secret garden, whatever it's called, it's no kind of no longer already. But uh, there's from what we see, they're kind of trying to pin it on Michelle and like Tiffany even a little bit is like a little trying to pin it on Michelle and the issue in their room. Is not really the guy's vote? It's the girl's vote and the girl's vote while Tiffany can be like, hey, none of us voted for you, Desi. That's all you need to know is none of us voted for you. Uh, what Desi might want to know is that it was Tiffany who at the last second would not vote Amanda and tie it up and see what happens in a tie that would immediately fold it and just said, uh, I'm tired of Josh and I don't want to tie. So I'll vote for Cassidy burn vote, AKA Desi's going in. So I don't know why Michelle's taking all of the heat. Maybe again, we didn't see, and it was equal heat. And obviously Desi by the end of this has decided 
I maybe need some new friends. I maybe need a new alliance. I maybe just need to purely play what is the best chance Desi has of winning daily challenges and being safe. So maybe it's all moot, but uh, Seeker Garden, not looking so tight. Michelle, Tiffany, both take political L's during this nomination segment. Then we head to the arena. The votes, you know, the men being split was interesting, I guess. Um, I think I just think that side of the board is fully shifted to chaos. No one really knows who anyone. It, it, it's all up in the air. There's lots of votes going everywhere, and it makes sense. There's lots of votes going everywhere. Female side also kind of makes sense that, you know, Desi does have all these people who are willing to try to help her, and Amanda has uh, another subset of people who maybe aren't directly trying to help Desi, but are like, we're good with Amanda going out. We maybe want Amanda to go out regardless of the final situation or anything like that. So makes perfect sense. Got to say, I did, well, while I'm kind of happy in the end result of this, of Amanda going home, uh, I did for a second just think, mm, Michaela versus Desi, you kind of saw it was going to be a pole wrestle. It's like, mm, that's a matchup right there. That's that's fierce. I don't want either of them to go. So I'm glad it didn't end up being that way. But I did in my head be like, mm, that's a damn, damn, damn good pole wrestle matchup right there if it would have come to fruition. And it is pole wrestle just with a disc, no big hand grips. I like anytime it's a pole wrestle. Obviously, it's always great. Staple, got to have it. I don't love that it's one round. That was surprising. I don't remember the last time pole wrestle was one round. And I do like, though, that it's you have to get the thing out of the ring. It's not just you have to get the other person's grip off of. I think it's more interesting, this version of you can get it away, but they could come back and get it on. I like that a little more. It's even more brutal, honestly. Um, but I do, I like that part of it. I don't love that it is one round, although for safety reasons and everything else, given that both of the rounds were a battle between each side, you know, it's probably best for their physical health. Certainly that it was only one round, but, uh, for our viewing experience, I would have loved a best of three as usual. Chris beats Lewis solid battle. I liked Lewis a lot in the limited time we saw of him. He was not anywhere near my pick for the next to go home. So it's a bummer. Liked Lewis a lot. I'd be down to see Lewis come back again. Uh, I'm interested in watching amazing race in general. And uh, Lewis is uh, one of those that is making me like, mm, if I'm going to go back and, you know, see what I think about amazing race these days, maybe it's his season that I should go back to and watch. Cause I did enjoy him. Chris seems pretty legit. We've now added, you know, that uh, he's done fine in all the dailies that I can remember. No standout either way performances, but gets a solid victory here. We learned he played collegiate football. Ball. I did not fact check as I should, like where that was, what that was, anything like that. But, uh, you know, that's in his background. So adds to like, he's down to get physical. He shows it here, a solid win for him. And, uh, he's looking pretty legit. He's starting to creep up my power rankings and I'm, you know, getting some ideas of like, well, how, how could he do? Do we, we kind of check in a couple things off the box here with Chris, as far as does he have or not have these certain aspects? So if we learn that Chris can also run for a long, long time and, or eat disgusting things, which I'm guessing anyone from survivor at this, you know, I'm just kind of guessing all of them learned how to eat disgusting things or would be willing to, uh, then we might, we might have a new contender on our hands. We'll see. Gets a little early to say that, but it's a nice step for him. Desi beats Amanda. I mean, Amanda does good. Sure. But it was never in question, no matter how they edit it. This was never in question, which speaking of edits, Desi's going to win this, right? This felt, Early in the episode, I was like, "Oh boy, uh, are we are we are we saying goodbye to Desi? Are we getting are we getting the Desi goodbye swan song here?" And then by the middle of the episode, I was like, "I feel like this is a little bit more Desi victory." And uh, yeah, uh, there's a lot of confessionals this episode for Desi, and I'm not saying you know that I'm guaranteeing she wins at this point by any means, but it definitely was like, okay, um, I think Desi is definitely making the finals based on the edit so far. And that's all I'll go into that. We say goodbye to Amanda, as always. Same as I said last week, won't regurgitate a lot of it. I always love Amanda on this show. She's great for the show. I It was feeling a little stale, a little tired, a little of the same shtick for me this time around. But I still will look forward to seeing her again and seeing if uh, it can feel a little more authentic the next time around. But she's always good. I'm, I'm still glad that she was there. In the end, Chris stays blue. Desi switches to blue. 
which I was a little surprised by, but blue is now pretty dominant. They have the two best women in the house by far in Tori and Desi. There's an argument to be made. They might even have the third best in Alyssa. I don't know. Michaela, Alyssa, I don't know who I would necessarily give that third spot, even though I'm about to in the power rankings, but they got stacked on the women's side. And then bananas, Kristen, you know, Sebastian is, is there as well, but bananas and Chris, I thought like just bananas, Tori Desi uh, with Chris and Alyssa. Yeah. It's just, it's a, it's a stack team compared to the other two at this point. So I expect some domination in their future to the awards we go and starting with the best quote i did not have an actual quote written down throughout the episode so we're gonna give this award to josh during nominations for all of the other the random things that he said and yelled uh over and over and over and that there was no way i was gonna be able to type out or write down all that chaos rolled up into one josh deserves he said the best and the most words this week and the loudest words this week he gets the best quote pick something in one of those big outbursts that he had as for the best moment, obviously both of Josh, his first blow up and his nominations blow up, both get nominated here along with bananas, dropping the discs in the whole kind of sabotage plot line that last round playing out Desi switching teams at the end of the episode. Definitely a big moment. I I was a little bit, I didn't want, I didn't think we were going to get to see, I thought they were going to cut it off. And then two, uh, I did not, totally expect her to switch teams. So that was exciting. The fifth and final nominee, it lasted for one second, but I was aware of it going in because he had posted a picture of it. My guy Fessel, who I will say this, the one other thing I will say on the editing front, Fessy on my count, which is almost always wrong, but never too far off, has four confessionals through four episodes. I don't think my guy's getting his first win. I could be wrong, but it... Next episode needs to be, we need to get some Fessy in our lives and he needs to survive the episode with a lot of Fessy in our lives for me to think there's any shot that he wins. Otherwise, you know, this might be a nice, totally in the background, totally not part of the season run to a final and that'd be fine. I'm I'm down for it, but he sent, you know, did the little promo post before the episode, new episode airs tonight. He had some pictures in there. One of which was him laying on the bench, fully clothed, not in his like workout clothes and his like maybe going to the arena or going out for the night or whatever clothes, laying on the bench press in the workout space outside with a little cat laying on his chest. If you listen to USA One, you learn that I'm a big cat guy. Um, if you know me at all, you know I'm a ma- massive cat guy. My cat, Jim, the best. He's the best. Love him so much. Big cat guy over here. Obviously, big fessy guy. So the one second little glimpse early in the episode, I think it was maybe on the way to the Daily Challenge. I don't remember exactly when they showed it, but a very quick snap shot of fessy in the kitty laying on his chest on the bench press outside. I just loved everything about that. So that was the fifth nominee. But of course, obviously, the best moment of the episode, Josh's pure chaos during nominations, the entire nominations. One more time, shout out to Chanel for holding your own. Michelle, I still love you. Uh, even though you took an L versus Josh in that political, I almost used the word mastermind in that political mess uh, that Josh did execute properly somehow, some way. As for the episode MVP, it's going to be no surprise on who that is either. Corey comes in fifth. He was doing a lot in the narration booth in this episode. Shout out to him. Chanel in fourth again, holds her own bananas in third. A lot of bananas. He, you know, has some good moments throughout this Desi in second, Josh in first. Josh is the MVP of this episode with respect to my absolute favorite Desi, who had a fantastic episode all the way through. Could very well easily be called the episode's MVP. But uh, I think, you know, I, I try to be objective around here. So Desi might be my favorite. Josh might typically be one of my lesser favorites, uh, least favorites, not favorites, you could say. But objectively, Josh was the MVP. Finally, we've got the power rankings. Females doesn't change at all. Desi won, Tori two, Michaela three, Alyssa four. And as I said uh, last episode, I don't, I think that's four. And then there's a drop off. I don't think anyone else can win other than one of those four on the women's side, unless Desi and Tori are both eliminated pre-final. And then it's a little more open to me, but I would still pick Michaela and Alyssa in that scenario. So 
those four at the top. And then one thing does change. Chanel moves into the fifth spot because someone has to fill that fifth spot, even if I think it's a four-woman race at this point. Um, and Chanel, after the solid performance this episode, gets that spot over Cassidy. On the men's side, Bananas has come all the way from not ranked to winning elimination to being first on the power rankings. Things are starting to really look up for him. A great episode for him as far as where he falls in the game now. If you watch the next week on, you know, I like the vet's strategy of what if we kind of start acting like we're going at each other, causing a little chaos, but under the radar, we are still working together, but we're trying to sow this survivor versus big brother thing. I just, I, I like it. And again, I, outside of specific elimination matchups, you know, a hall brawl versus a Fessy or something, or an, any elimination matchup versus Wes. I like bananas chances. He moves to the top. Wes stays second. He's going to be on the ropes, maybe more than we thought. Um, maybe replaces bananas on those ropes, but I think he can do really well from there. Fessy's in third falls one spot. He's in a fantastic spot in the game, but just like I said, the edit has me concerned that the, there's almost no chance he could actually win this season or else they would maybe be showing him a little bit more, but we'll see. It's only four episodes in. There's one episode left before I'm like, boom, that's over. It's the verdicts in. We shall see. Josh in fourth, Corey in fifth, and yes, I basically have the five vet guys at this point as the top five. That That's what it is. One of them's winning. Um, bananas, Wes... <sighs> I, I don't know. Bananas and Wes are winning. One of them's winning. I think it's just going to happen. I think it's going to happen. I think, you know, uh, I picked Desi and Wes and I'm, I feel good about it, but I kind of feel like this might be bananas is to lose uh, now. I don't know, but it's one of those twos to lose. And it's definitely none of the rookie guys. Um, definitely not dusty who we didn't talk about. Uh, it's, you know, I'll let, I'll let all the folks on social media talk about dusty's, Note to bananas, his love for bananas, his hero bananas. It's getting a little, it's getting a little out of hand. We'll leave it at that. As for predictions for next week, we went one for three last week. We said bananas would join blue, but I thought he'd replace Sebastian. Blue would win the daily. They'd serve up a male that they thought Wes could beat. None of those second, third, or fourth ones really came to fruition. So we went one of four. We're five out of 12 on the season. That is not a good percentage. Let's get back on track for next week. I'm going with, it's another double elimination. I think all of them might be the rest of the way out. Uh, Map says that if this was a 10 episode season, but uh, that they would have to basically do doubles all the way. I think it might be 12. I believe that's what USA one was. Um, so we'll see. Maybe they go back to singles, but I'm going with next week, another double elimination. Why not? I think Tiffany is in elimination next week. I think blue gets a win. Bananas Tori will be riding high. And fourth and finally, I think Michaela will throw some shade. I don't know at who. I just know she's going to throw it. Those are your predictions. Those are your power rankings, your awards, your storylines, your opinions, your thoughts, your breakdown challenge USA Two episode four. That's the pod for today. Thank you as always for being here, for joining me for another season of the challenge, which got to say, as far as what the new version of the challenge is, this kind of modern, especially this CBS version, the survivor fied big brother fied version of the challenge. I think this is the best case scenario. What we've seen through four episodes. It doesn't mean it's like one of the best challenge seasons ever, because there's some things that are no longer really a part of the challenge that would make for the best possible seasons. But from what we possibly could get out of a CBS challenge USA, I think so far we're getting about as good as it possibly could be. I'm very much enjoying it. I'm really looking forward to two more episodes coming next week, Thursday and Sunday. So join me here Friday morning. Join me here the following Monday morning again as we break down the next couple of episodes. Thanks as always at Challenge Story on Instagram. If you want to get in touch or if you're watching this on YouTube, hit those comments below. Let me know what you think I'm getting right, getting wrong, your thoughts on this season. Thank you. I love you. I appreciate you. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.